Okay, uh, this is a tutorial showing how to assemble the uh, buttons for the C50 mo module um, and uh, how to solder all the elements on the printed circuit board. And uh, what we need uh, as tools is the soldering kite iron, uh, solder, flux, uh, having a multimeter just to check if everything is alright, and uh, yeah, a couple of uh, other handy tools just to make it easier for work. Uh, we have a um, bill of materials lists and um, the, the schematics of the, of the board and all those documents can be found on the wiki page and you can download, it, download them and see everything you need. Alright, the first thing that I'm going to solder um, are the resistors. And uh, I will start with the 270 resistors for the LEDs of the buttons. And uh, first I take some flux and put it in the place where I'll put the first resistor. I take the resistor, put it in place. And then simply solder it. Okay, and then I solder it on the other side. There we go, we have the first resistor soldered. Now I have 15 more to do of those 270 resistors. When we have uh, Solder to all the 16 resistors of 270 uh, ohms. Uh, it's time to solder the next four uh, resistors of 10k, and uh, they are two on the top side and two on the bottom side, which I'm going to solder right now. When we are done with the soldering of the resistors, it's time to solder the capacitors. And I'm going to start with uh, two um, 100 nanofarads uh, uh, capacitors, um, C1 and C2. Now it's time to solder the third uh, capacitor, which is 10 microfarads. After uh, soldering the resistors and capacitors, it's time to solder the chips. And there are two chips on each board. I'm going to solder them. Um, what I'm using the flux mainly is to um, facilitate the soldering process. Uh, when you use flux, uh, it's much easier to solder all the components. And uh, it's uh, really important to use flux when you solder the chips because it's much easier. How I, chip, uh, how I solder the chips is basically I place the chip and I align all the legs to the board and I, so I'm pretty sure that they fit all. And then I solder one on each corner so I have the, the chip fixed to the board. And after I do this, I use flux and I put it on all of the legs and then just drag the soldering iron across the legs with just a, a bit of solder. Uh, when you see closely, uh, you can see if it's uh, soldered well or not. And you have to be careful about not making any bridges. But uh, basically you just drag the soldering iron across the legs and this should fix the whole process. Okay, now it's time to solder the second chip. It's the same procedure, uh, just be careful how it's oriented so you don't have it mistaken. <laughs> Once uh, all the soldering uh, works are done, um, you can use magnifying glass to see if uh, all the connections are made well, and especially on the chips, and also on the other, uh, on the other components, uh, 
And the other thing that I usually do after uh, finishing my work is to measure all the resistors that uh, so I'll be sure that they are soldered correctly and everything is fine. Now I'm measuring the resistors if they are soldered correctly and uh, I'm starting from the bottom leg. You can see all the pads and then uh, easily find which one corresponds to which resistor uh, and the, the reading of the meter should be uh, zero when you don't uh, have a connection and it should be uh, 270 or uh, about 270 ohms when you measure a resistor and this uh, this is exactly the value of the resistors that we have soldered for the buttons and you can see 270. Now it's time to solder a small switch with the two micro switches on the board which um, we use to configure the address of the board and it's the same procedure and it's um, easy to solder here on its place. After soldering all of the components, it's time to solder the buttons, but before doing this, because they are expensive ones, <coughs> it's important to check if the board is working correctly. In order to do this, I'm going to use an Arduino uh, Ethernet board, but you can do this test also with any Arduino board and you connect it via USB to your, to your computer or laptop. Another thing that I'm going to use is a board with four buttons that are soldered on it and they, they have those uh, pins that are easy just to connect temporarily to the board without soldering it. This is a pre-made um, board that I have made for testing but you can also do it with uh, only one button it, each time and it takes more time but it's possible and you can test that uh, your board is working correctly. Uh, before doing the test you need to download uh, the library from the website and uh, then uh, you can you have to put it in the correct folder and then you find it uh, find the correct um, test um, um, test script under examples and then you go to scohoy uh, bi8 and you take input test then uh, once you open this file, you upload it to the Arduino board and then you can make the test. So I'm powering up the board via this cable and it's taking power from the Arduino board and then I take the buttons and I place them exactly where they should be placed in the original set up when you have to solder them. Then I press the reset button and you can see all the blinking uh, sequence of the buttons. It's, it's performed by the software and, and you can see it once again, I'll do it. I press the reset button and you can see how they blink with all of the colors that are necessary. I can make a manual test by pressing each button several times and it will go through all of the colors and you can see that it's going yellow, red, green, uh, orange and then off and this goes for all of the buttons. So you can uh, be sure that uh, your board is working correctly. Okay, uh, once we have tested the boards that they are working, uh, it's time to solder the buttons and I have placed five buttons on that board. Uh, you just simply do this by plugging them in their correct places. And one good thing to do before soldering them is to place them on some flat surface as I'm going to do on this phone. So they will be exactly flat when I solder them and they won't be on different levels. Mm -hmm. 
soldered all of the buttons on those two boards and I'm going to perform the same test again so I'm sure that everything is uh, correctly mounted and it's working perfectly. I'm using the same Arduino board and I'm doing the same test. I'm just connecting now the power and you can see that the buttons are lit. I reset the board and you can see that all the colors are running through the buttons. Now I will do the manual test where I press the button and I can see all the colors running and it goes for all of the buttons so I'm sure that everything is correct and it's working. And I do this the same test to the, for the second board. So that is basically how you solder all the components on the board and how you assemble it and make it running. This is the ready board. How I started? I started with the resistors. I soldered, soldered all of them. Then I soldered the capacitors. And then I soldered the chips, which are more difficult to solder. At the end, I soldered this little switch for uh, programming the, the, the board. And before soldering the buttons, I made a test with the pre-made buttons. So I was sure that uh, the board is running, there is no faulty component, no wrong soldering and uh, everything is working. Then I soldered the buttons and it was important that I soldered them on a flat surface so they are now perfectly aligned and they are exactly flat as they should be as a should be on a professional equipment and finally I do the same test so I'm sure that the buttons are working and all the colors are presented here and that's how you make this board.